Plants, 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 plants. Plants are great. That's why I have like 200 of them in my house. But plant nerd conventions are super fun. And hear me out on this. So as you guys know, I really like plants and my friends really like plants and sometimes we get together and talk about plants and the cool things that plants can do and the cool plants that we have and the plants that we can eat and drink and smoke and grow all over the universe and basically plants are wonderful. This plant biology conference has been going on every single year for 80 freaking years and this year it was in San Jose, California, which is super close to where I grew up. There were about 1,500 other scientists, there were vendors selling us stuff to help us like, you know, make more plant discoveries. I saw some cool like algae jewelry and there was just so many different things to explore. I also presented a poster. There were a total of like 232 talks and almost like 800 posters. So I just kind of narrowed it down to the things that I found the most interesting and wanted to share with you guys. Plants, but in space. There is no gravity in space, so how are plants supposed to figure out which way is up and which way is down? I went ahead and went to a little NASA panel. Teaching me about this is space dude Al Myers. I am finishing up my PhD and I am most interested in how plants respond to sub-Earth gravity. Unfortunately, the experiments are super limited because astronauts don't have a lot of time and there's not a lot of space in space. <laughs> Yeah, so a lot of preferential treatment is given to experiments that are going to take only a little bit of astronaut time. Well, first of all, you can't take up a lot of space on the International Space Station. Often our experiments only grow for, you know, three-day-old seedling or five-day-old seedling. Since it's hard to get experiments in outer space, sometimes scientists try to replicate zero gravity with machines like this. Even though this machine does still have gravity, because it's moving around, the total amount of gravity is kind of like zero. But we aren't really sure how similar these machines are to actual zero gravity. How different are you finding those plants from the plants that are actually experiencing no gravity? Yeah, so that's a big question in the field right now. When we simulate zero gravity in that way, is that actually a, a good approximation of plant response to those environments, or is it just kind of random? That's actually, it's funny you ask that, fancy clinostats randomly moves to plant around so that it can't establish that vector of gravity. Scientists like Al put seed cassettes into the machines. So the plants grow in here? Yeah. And each of these is the seed cassettes. These tiny little brown dots that you see here are the seeds. I don't even know if my camera's gonna be able to focus that tiny. <laughs> I was super surprised at how well the seeds can grow without gravity. About 85% of normal seeds can germinate and grow. For his research, Al Myers is using a special mutant. This mutant plant can't sense gravity the main way that plants sense it. Phosphoglucomutase mutants. So it relies on other ways to figure out up and down. Growing plants in space can help feed astronauts, but also it provides psychological benefits for long-term spaceflight. Research has shown that gardening is really soothing and can be beneficial for mental health. There's a lot of joy in growing and watering plants and nurturing them so they become big. Astronauts cooped up in a tiny spaceship for years with the same people are going to need all the soothing activities they can get. How do Impossible Burgers taste impossibly like meat? One of my favorite sections was all about Impossible Foods. Impossible Foods is all about sustainability, but also making sure that things still taste delicious. So you guys might have heard about the Impossible Burger, a completely vegetarian burger that tastes exactly like beef. It is surreal how good it tastes. Almost half the land on Earth is being used for grazing or raising cattle or raising the crops to feed those cattle. And about 25% of the Earth's freshwater supply is being used for animal agriculture. This is more than any other industry. This industry is destroying our planet by putting more and more greenhouse gases into our atmosphere. It puts more greenhouse gases in our atmosphere than cars, trains, buses, planes, and rockets combined. We're clearing all these forests just so we can have more land to grow more animals. Impossible Foods is basically trying to make a more sustainable burger that's also nutritious and also delicious. The Impossible Burger also beats beef in categories like vitamins and minerals like B12 and folate and thiamine and iron. Since this was a talk by like a very fancy company, I couldn't actually record any pieces of it, but I can show you guys what my notes look like. So basically, the secret to making not meat taste like meat is a molecule that's found in all plants and animals, especially animals. It's called heme. It's what gives raw meat that bloody flavor and makes things taste and smell and cook really, really delicious. Let me move that tail out of the way. Don't worry, Crispy, I won't eat you. Basically, Impossible Foods looked at the heme in many, many, many plants and found that the soy heme could be used as a replacement. 
Then they did even more tests to make sure that this plant heme, just like every other heme that's already in our diet, is perfectly safe to eat. Now we have yummy, delicious burgers that are also sustainable. I'm really glad that Impossible Foods doesn't require giving up the delicious quality of food in order to be more sustainable. Why is labeling cannabis so important? This was probably my favorite section. Disclaimer, this conference did happen in California where cannabis is 100% legal. When you buy produce like fruits, vegetables, bud, how are you sure that what you're buying is actually correct? You check the label. But how do you know if what's on the label is 100% correct? Since cannabis has had a very colorful history, the labels have kind of been switched around, up and down, danced, and everything in between. So things that are labeled may not actually be what the label says. Sometimes when you buy, say, Purple Punch, it's actually more like cereal milk, and you get a totally different experience with both of those things. And this is a problem not just for your average smoker, but especially for people who use cannabis medicinally. To help people. If you're using it to treat your seizures, if you're using it to treat your anxiety, or any number of medicinal uses that cannabis has, you wanna make sure that whatever it is you're buying is the exact same thing every time, because you wanna get that exact same effect. The cannabis that they're taking is just different every single time, so you're not having a consistent response. Traditionally, chemical testing has been the preferred method, but you can kind of fool chemical testing by just adding in whatever you want to make the test come out as whatever you want. So how do you defeat a chemical test? You have another test, a DNA test. Because of these concerns, the cannabis industry is turning towards genetic testing to increase the confidence in strain anatomy. Since genetic testing is precise and accurate, this is a much better way of making sure that whatever the cannabis is labeled as is actually what the cannabis is. You cannot fool the DNA. LeafWorks is doing exactly that. DNA testing to make sure that the label on the cannabis accurately represents the cannabis strain. Okay, this is high key super exciting. Guess what these are? Little rice seeds. I also work on rice seeds, check it out. The software seems to be, I guess, detecting uh, small ones and seeing if any of them have different colors or if there are any size outliers as well and gives you a percentage of all of it. I love seeing how all these things can be applied to make the world a better place and make people's lives better too. And these are my favorite parts about the conference because we get to blend science and plants together and scientists get to learn more about how plants are growing and we can make the world more sustainable and we can give people better medicine and I hope you guys also enjoyed all of this as well. So if you did, please give it a like and hit that subscribe button as well. Share it with a friend who's interested in sustainability or cannabis as well, or any one of the things that I've mentioned before. And that's all I have for you guys today. I'll see you on the next page.